Hello YouTube, Dr. Sola is back. Um, so, quick update. Actually, before I give you an update, let me tell you what I've done. So, over the last three days, I have replaced, well, I have replaced my Nissan Leaf, which is in here, with the Wiko. Wiko was pretty straightforward. I used the cables that, that came with it, and I um, crushed a log, drilled a hole in it, and then attached my Wiko cables to put it onto my bus bar and then to put it onto my battery monitor. So it allows me to monitor what's going in and what's co coming out. Um, this battery is rated at 86 amp hours. I am pulling anywhere between 74 and 82 amp hours out of it. And you know what? I'm getting the same run time, maybe slightly less than what I was getting from my Nissan Leaf. So in terms of value for the money, um, the Nissan Leaf definitely is a cheaper alternative, but in terms of worrying about safety, tenure warranty, a BMS that actually works, then the Wiko is definitely a better deal. Um, I also like the form factor, as you can see it's pretty small, does not occupy any space, just does its job like it should. So as far as this goes, I'm fine. The capacity is not better than what I was getting from my Nissan Leaf. However, they're all new cells, um, act, active equalizing and balancing, um, a BMS that um, turns on and off, and then it has a contactor inside. So when you turn the battery on initially, um, the contactor kicks in, then it comes on. So I'm getting, let's see, 80 times 50. So I'm getting about four kilowatts out of it, maybe a little over four kilowatts out of it. Um, that's the max I got. Yesterday I got about 3,800 watts out of it. Out of it. Um, it's been unusually warm, so my systems are demanding a lot more than what they would ordinarily demand. So when I do that measurement based on what I think, I'm not extremely happy. But if I look at what the battery monitor says is coming out, then you know what it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. is giving me what it says it's supposed to give me. And, and based on that, I'm pretty happy. Easy installation, no stress, nothing. Just plug it in and you're ready to go. Do the settings on your inverter. I mean, do your settings on your inverter and you're good. Um, they recommend a cutoff of 50 volts and a max of 55.5. Um, I've run it to 48 volts a few times using my SW. My SW does not cut off. Um, above the cutoff is 48 volts, and if it has a load, it will temporarily uh, hit 47.9 for a minute or two and then it will drop. So, let's talk about the big beast in the room the Lux Power. As you can see, I've put a waterproof cover. Um, first of all, the thing is huge, I mean, it's big. Look at the SW, and then come back and look at it. It's like, you know, a high school, a college athlete against a high school or university athlete, athlete. The size, sorry, not even, sorry, an NFL athlete against an university athlete. For my non-American um, friends, we have something called American football. Uh, you don't do it with your feet, you throw the ball. And it's also played in high school, which is secondary school. Played in universities and then the professional leagues at the NFL. The players in the NFL, NFL are just substantially bigger than the players in the secondary schools or high school. So form, form factor wise size, I think is huge. A good chunk of this is the heat sink. So let me see if I could get you a view. So the heat sink starts from here and goes all the way to the top. That's just the heat sink alone. Um, one of the things that they did is that it's IP65, so it's water and dust proof. Everything they give you they labeled, and not only did they label, but they're all uh, watertight. I don't know if you can see underneath there, underneath here. You can see it's pretty watertight or dust tight. Nothing can get into it. So that's one thing they've done. Um, it weighs about 22 kg. For my American friends, 22 is about 36 pounds, 37 pounds, give or take. So it's about 37, 30, it's under 40 pounds. Okay, this monster here, is about 35 or 40 kg. That's one. So you couldn't see the difference. This has a transformer, this doesn't have a transformer. That's a major difference. So yesterday I finished the installation 
and I touched the I touched the heat sink and I got a shock and then I touched the refrigerator and I got a shock so I sent a message to my folks at Lux Power and they said did you earth it so I thought they were referring to doing a chassis bond earth and I said I had not done that yet they said well in addition to doing that I also have to have out of the EPS an earth cable so this morning so I turned it off actually I bypassed it so we bypass so I'll change that setting for it will no longer be Victron it will go back to say Lux Power and then on top will be the Schneider Connect so I bypassed it and I ran the Connect all through the night so that our appliances will stop shocking people so I did that and this morning I ran um, I got an earth rod and I'll show it to you in a second well I made my own earth rod because everything is closed you can't go to buy anything so I made my own earth rod I pounded it into the ground it's about uh, five foot I don't know how, how many that is in centimeters or inches so I can't I can't help you there so I pounded it into the ground and then I ran this from here into that in addition also um, I've run the ground that this ground wire is coming from the, um, the ground wire that's already existing there my guys never grounded anything and then I used the little bus bar to um, sh do share share the incoming with every every appliance so this has to be grounded I don't have any logs so as soon as I get, lo get logs it will be grounded and this has to be grounded and I think that needs to be grounded to just the outer casing and I suspect that I need to ground this as well so it will be very easy for us to accomplish all that anything that's metal should be grounded I'll ask them about the battery if the battery needs to be grounded if it needs to be grounded I'll ground it as well so once I did that I touched the sides no shock I touched the fridge no shock so I'm going to run this going forward um, one thing I'll say about the locks power people is they've been very supportive uh, the data you see here or data you see on your laptop doesn't really match what your multimeter says but when they log in they see what you see when they log in in real time what you're seeing on your multimeter or what you're seeing on your charge controller here is exactly what the inverter is seeing but for whatever reason is not reporting that is not reporting that information so I don't know if it's going to be a software patch down the road to fix it but it's a little disconcerting for me personally uh, one other thing also is we're running um, our, ch our, ch our, ch our panels are producing about 130 to 140 volts and it's times 80 percent we're seeing about 104, 105, 106, 107 so that's what the system that's what the system is working off of not the short circuit voltage or open circuit voltage um, is working off loaded voltage on our old charge controllers even loaded that's the voltage we saw but then you know this charge controller shows you two bits of information so it shows you um, imp it shows you input which is uh, what's coming into your into your batteries sorry it shows you output is what's coming to your batteries input shows you your voltage 99.2 and then 3.5 amps and then it steps that down to 52.8 volts and then 3.7 amps so it's not really that, that, that much different um, my take is that the Chinese have a slightly different translation um, I'll, uh, over time I'll see but so far it looks like it's working fine I'll go back and adjust the settings because I panicked a bit thinking that the numbers the batteries will get overcharged and in reality they said they're saying it would not because it's referencing what it references is what it sees but what it transmits is a little different so that's fine final thing um, as you can see I tidied up the wiring I used cable ties I've secured everything um, here they are, they are Wiko and them are working on getting the CAN connection so the inverter could communicate with the battery um, I'm thinking within next week or two that should happen once it happens I'll connect this cable to the inverter and sorry to the battery and then it would work that way so this video is a little longer than I planned let me take you outside and show you real quick what I did and then I'll so I'm back so as you see I ran these yesterday these are new cables to work for the lux power 
um, they are PV cables, so you can see obviously it's superior to what we had before. Um, this is a ground cable coming from for the chassis or anything that's metal. Um, it's connected to the back of this, to the side here, and then the ground earth cable, which we didn't do right, right because should be exposed, is connected here. So we're getting a common connection from the combiner box into everything in there. Now for the EPC earth, this cable comes from, um, so you have your L, N, and E. This is the E. I run the E here. I'm going to tack it later. It's going to get tacked to the wall. And then I trenched. And then this is it right here. So I didn't have a copper pipe. So what I did is I have um, a rebar. And I cut it. And then I pounded um, five feet of it into the ground. I, didn't, I don't have a collar because I can't go anywhere. And this is temporary till we can go out. And then I'll do it properly. But right now, it's solving the problem. I have five foot worth of uh, rebuy in the ground, and um, it's doing what I want it to do. So once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. If you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them below. Uh, if you've not subscribed, please click the subscribe button. Once again, thank you for watching. Stay safe, please. Stay safe, stay healthy. Follow, your, follow what your local authorities tell you to do. This shall pass if we all play up, if we all play our part.